Hello, Princess on the Pillow here. I am here to do a review slash recap with my opinion on Brother Husband, Season 1, Episode 5. It's titled, Parents Just Don't Understand. All right, Elisa and Mike. So we left off last episode with his mother, Mike's mother, asking him if Elisa hadn't cheated on him, would he have chosen this lifestyle? Mike looks at Elisa, and she nods to him, and he says the response that they practice at home. Mike says to his mother, this is the lifestyle I want. Like a robot. This is the lifestyle I want. That's what they pract he practiced saying. That's what Elisa tell him to practice saying. He didn't answer the question. He just said what Elisa and him practice him saying. This is, the, this is the lifestyle I want. Nobody asked you that. But anywho. Um, Mike is saying a whole bunch of shit. And he's trying to convince his mother that this is the lifestyle he wants. His mother tells the camera that she does not believe him. Mother, you're right. I don't believe him either. Him and Elisa practiced saying these words. They, she prompted him as she probably held up flashcards to him and everything, and you know to tell him what to say. Mike had told her, "This is the read. This is how I know that Mike is not on board with this crap." Mike had told her, "Don't bring anybody into our bed or into our bedroom. Don't bring anybody into the spare room." He said, "Matter of fact, don't bring any of these men to the house." That's how I know Mike is not um, on board with this. He's not. He even questioned her. When she put her um, profile up online on the dating site, he even questioned her. He said, did you tell these guys that you are married? And she kind of snapped at him and said, yes, I did. He is not on board with this crap. He is not. That's how I can tell he's not on board with it. It does not sound to me at all like he wants this lifestyle. So then the mother tells the camera that she will support her son, but um, she won't support the lifestyle. She told Elise, Elisa that she never had much time on her hands. She had to work and raise kids. She's trying to tell Elisa, girl, go get a hobby, go get a job. Go find something else to do instead of spreading your legs for these men and have them jump up and down in between them. That's what, she, that's what she's telling her. That's basically what she's telling her. She's like, I didn't have time for this to go, you know, um, trying to find a man to have sex with. I had to work and raise kids. I don't know if Elisa will work. I think um, Mike works and she just stay at home surfing internet for guys to have sex with. I don't know what she does. Um, the mother told her, when you have kids, you don't have time to be, you know, you don't have time to be trying to find men. And Lisa says, Lisa said to the mother, we don't want kids. And then Mike says, wait, hold up. Kids aren't 100% off the table. And then Lisa looked at him and said, we don't want kids. And then he goes, okay, we don't want kids. You see how she browbeat him into doing what she wants? That's exactly how she got him to agree to her having sex with other men. She browbeat him into this stuff. He wants kids. He said, wait a minute, kids aren't entirely off the table. And she said, no, we don't want kids. And he has to agree with her because he doesn't want to lose her. Next, Mike asked his mother to go chat with him. And I'm glad he did that. He needs to go talk to his mother without Elisa browbeating him into saying what she wants him to say. So his mother tells him that she doesn't understand why he would choose this lifestyle. Mike tells his mother that if Elisa hadn't cheated on him, he probably wouldn't have agreed to the lifestyle. He probably wouldn't be living this lifestyle. Then he tells his mother that he doesn't want kids. He just said at the table that kids aren't off the table. Now he's telling his mother, well, me and her, we don't want kids. You see how we switch up because she's mad at him? He's stupid. And I don't feel sorry for him anymore. I don't. He's a grown-ass man allowing this selfish-ass woman to treat him like crap. She don't love him. She don't care about him. And she doesn't respect him. 
I don't understand why um, you can't love somebody who treats you this badly. Why does he love her? Because she's good looking and he doesn't think he could get anybody that looking. She's not all that. Anyway, um, that's the end of them. Next is Kenya, Carl, and Tiger. So Carl and Kenya go shopping for sheets for Tiger's bed. Uh, because uh, Kenya is kicking him out of her room, so he needs... I don't know where he's going to be sleeping. I, don't see, I think they only have a two-bedroom. I'm not sure. But she's kicking him out of her bedroom, so she's um, buying him some sheets for his new bed. So then the sales lady comes over to ask them if they need help. And Kenya just felt the need to tell her her business. All her business. About her lifestyle. But I did like the sales lady. The sales lady said that she lives with no man. And she has two dogs. And that's the best situation for her. Ever. And I agree. I'd rather live with dogs than a man. <laughs> that's mean. I shouldn't say that. Anyway, Carl um, must feel sorry for Tiger. Because he tells Kenya that... She is kicking Tiger out, and Tiger feels some type of way about that. So Kenya tells the cameraman that Tiger and her used to be wild bunnies. They used to be all over each other. But now all they do is wake up and say good morning, and they both go their separate ways. And now that the, pa the passion has fizzled out, it's time to move on and get a new man. And we definitely know that her and Carl are not having sex. So she has to bring a new man in. So Carl tells Kenya that Tiger is feeling insecure about moving out of her bedroom. Kenya said to Carl, Tiger is not having sex with me. So he needs to move out so that I can bring in someone who will have sex with me. Now she didn't say those words, those exact words. But that's what she meant. Okay. So Carl suggests to Kenya that she uh, give Tiger his commitment ceremony that he's been asking for. Um, to make up for kicking him out of her bedroom. Alright, so the next scene. Kenya and Tiger are out walking Moonstone. That's the dog. Tiger tells Kenya that he is on edge about David coming into the dynamics. He wants to know if David will be the third husband. And Kenya told um, Tiger that David is a potential number three. And Tiger asked Kenya if David is going to move back into the house. And Ken Kenya told him that she didn't know. And Tiger, Tiger says to the camera that it's unfair to him that David is trying to take his spot and he um, is being put on the back burner. Well, I say to you, Tiger, if you, um, you need to step up um, you need to step up your game because you're not having sex with Kenya. What do you expect her to do? If you're not having sex with her, then you need to move out of her bedroom. So that's, you know, to make room for another man. What, I mean, what do you expect is going to happen if you're not having sex with her? She needs to, you know, move another guy in who's willing to step up to the plate because you're not willing to step up, step up to the plate. I don't understand why that's so hard for Tiger to understand. Anyway, Kenya told Tiger that she didn't know if David would be the third husband, but she said that they needed a bigger house. Then Tiger asked Kenya if David is the reason he is being kicked out of her bedroom. Doesn't he realize that you're not having sex with her, so that's why she wants you out? She's told you twice or three times already. So he wants to know if is it because of David while he's why he's being kicked out of her bedroom. Ken, Kenya told him no. The reason he's being kicked out of the bedroom is because their passion has fizzled out. He had, she had told him that before, and he even said that the reason the passion fizzled out is because he goes to work, and when he comes home, he's tired. That was his excuse for not having sex with her. So anyway, because Kenya is feeling guilty about kicking Tiger out of her bedroom. She decides to give him what he wants. She gets down on one knee and she asks him to have a commitment ceremony with her. And then she puts her wedding ring on his finger. Is this the wedding ring that Carl bought for her when they first got married? That's, I don't know. I have no idea. So now Carl is on, now Tiger is on cloud nine. He is elated. And I don't understand why a commitment cer cer ceremony means so much to him. 
He's still not legally married to her. Next up, Kim, Dustin, and Vincent. So Kim is home and she FaceTime with her brother, Mike. She, uh, she tells her brother that she finally told her parents about her lifestyle. She said her parents were not okay with her lifestyle because they are Christians and they believe it's a sin, that her lifestyle is a sin. So Kim wants to invite her family to visit, but she wants her brother to encourage them to come. And then he agrees to do that for her. After she gets through talking to her brother, she starts to cry. And I don't know why she's crying. I mean, she chooses to sleep around on her husband and because her parents are not on board with it, she cries? Does that make sense? Her parents should be the one crying. Yeah, or no, better yet, her husband should be the one crying. I don't know what the hell she's crying about. She's the one that chooses to sleep around with these men. Um, so, you know what? Kim's tears means absolutely nothing to me. I don't understand what the hell she's crying about. She's choose to fuck around on her husband, and now she's crying. Because people don't understand why she's doing it. Girl, bye. She's treating her body like an amusement park for random men to just use. That's what she's doing. I don't know where her morals is, and I don't know where her soul is. She probably sold her soul to the devil. I shouldn't be saying all that, but hey, that's how I feel. Anyway, Dustin and Kim are grilling out. The next scene, Dustin and Kim are grilling out. And she invited her, her, she's expecting her parents and sister and brothers to show up. She plans on telling them about her lifestyle, explaining it to them so that they'll understand. So then the doorbell rings and she rushes to the door, thinking her family's going to be there. But it's only her brother, Mike. The rest of them decided not to come. I guess the brother couldn't convince them to come. So the brother is making all these excuses as to why they, the family didn't come. There's no reason to do that. The family didn't come because they think her lifestyle is a sin and they want no part of it. That's it. He don't have to explain anything. That is it. So Kim and her brother, they put together the picnic table. And I don't understand why she waited until the guests arrived to put together the picnic table. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's so damn dumb. So while they're building the picnic table, because that's what they had to do, they had to build the picnic table. While they're building the picnic table, Kim is explaining her lifestyle to her brother. And then she tells him about Vincent. And she's hoping her brother will go back and tell the family, you know, explain to the family about her lifestyle. They don't want to hear it, Kim. You're committing a sin effing around on your husband. And that's that. Stop trying to force your lifestyle down their throat. They don't want no part of it. The majority in the, pe in the the majority of people in this world would not agree with that with that type of lifestyle. Okay, so stop trying to shove it down their throat, Kim. All right, next up, Shara, Patrick, and Noble. So Valentino is back in town, and him and Shara are on a date, and they're walking through the damn woods. That wouldn't be me. That would not be me. Why couldn't they go get some coffee, or go get a drink, or go get a bite to eat, or even go bowling? Why are they walking through the damn woods? That's a cheap date. Maybe they can't, they're not, they can't afford to um go out. They can't afford to go out. Why are they walking through the woods? This could be anything in the woods. Snakes, spiders, rats. I wouldn't be doing that. Anyway, they um, walk through the woods till they get to this waterfall. And I love a waterfall, but I'm not walking through no damn woods to see a waterfall. I'm not doing that. Yeah, so they get to the waterfall, and um, they hug and kiss. Then they sit down on these rocks. I wouldn't do that. What are they doing that for? Why would you sit on those rocks? Anything can crawl out of those rocks and get you. I wouldn't be sitting on those rocks. They're crazy. Anyway, um, Shara uh, tells Valentino how she feels about him. She said that they are spiritually connected. What does that mean? Spiritually connected. I don't get. I don't know what that means. Somebody gotta tell me what that means because I have no clue what that means. Anyway, she tells him that she is serious about him and she asks him how does he feel about her. 
So Valentino tells her that he is enjoying the ride and he knows where he's going. What does that mean? What is he talking about? I don't know. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. But Shara um, accepted it and she's okay with it. Then she asked him again about the long distance. The last time she asked him how they're going to um, function in this long distance relationship, he said absent made the heart grow fonder. Valentino likes to throw out these little sayings instead of answering the question. Valentina told her that she can visit him and that he can visit her. So that solved that. That solved the distance issue. That mean and that made Shara happy and now she wants she wants to dump Noble because Noble does not want to have a baby with her. Um Noble wants to date other women. Plus Noble is broke. So she wants to dump Noble. Because Noble actually brings nothing to the table. So Valentino agrees with Shara that she should get rid of Noble. Next scene, Shara meets up with Noble. And she tells him that she has been seeing someone else. And then she tells him that she just wants to be friends with him. With him, Noble. And Noble is not happy. He feels like he's being swapped out. He's like, I'm already here. Why replace me? You're being replaced, uh, Noble, because you don't want to have a baby with her. You want to date other women, and you're broke. That's why you're being swapped out. You're less than. You bring nothing to the table. You know? That's why you're being swapped out. He can't understand it. So then Shara starts to cry because she feels like she's hurting Noble's feelings. Why is she crying? If anybody should be crying, it's Noble. He was just dumped. But she's crying. She dumps him and then she cries. Oh, I'm hurting his feelings. Oh, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. You're dating a bunch of men. Somebody's going to get their feelings hurt. Oh. Shara tells Noble that um, they can still be friends. And then she walks off. And Noble tells the camera that he will not be contacting her at all. And Nobi is out and Valentino is in. And this is the end of my review. Princess on a Pillow here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.